So hello, welcome back to the channel. If you are joining this journey randomly and you haven't been following the uh, DBX story, uh, we are down at a wonderful company in Birmingham called Vortens, uh, who have been making Aston Martin badges for how long, Nick? Uh, since about the 1960s. 1960s, yeah. okay. So today we are here to make the badge, which is going to go on the JWW edition DBX. Uh, for anyone tuning in now, I have been part of the most incredible journey to uh, create a series production car, which I've had the honor actually of designing. Um, mm -hmm. I still can't believe that those words are leaving my mouth. It still feels a bit odd. Uh, but a really big part of this project is that we are making our own custom batch. Now, when this project started, I, I wasn't aware of what a big deal that was, but Marek Reichman at, at Aston said, for a spotter context, mate, what you've asked us to do is like going to Chanel and asking them to flip the seas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, I didn't realize it was that big a deal. So here we are at the company, Vortens, that make the badges. A spotter context, how long have you been doing this for? Well, the uh, company was established in 1819. So a while. Uh, <laughs> Two, it was 200 years old last year. Okay. Uh, wow. uh, the wings badges themselves, supplying Aston Martin heritage since mm. around the 60s. Wow, okay. And then Aston Martin uh, Gaiden, so main production yep. since 2012. Quite a surprise to me on Friday that uh -huh. you're having a completely different spec. Yes. So you're not having the enamel badge, it's something slightly different, which yeah. you're gonna do. I think we're gonna make it look pretty special. Cool. Um, right. Which obviously we'll, we'll get you having a go on that as well, but um, it should be it should be good. It should Great be interesting stuff, for you. It's not just car badges that no. you make or have been making. As for, you know, the CV kind of started very early. Yeah. From the football league through to the Olympic medals, and that was the same year Rolls Royce was founded. So Vortons okay. were the original suppliers for the Rolls Royce nose badges. Wow. Okay. Uh, in a, in polished chrome. So when any any original Rolls Royces you see with the red enamel in them, yes, that'll be our badge. Okay. Uh, wow. and then fast forward a few years, yeah. uh, we made the first class uh, plaques on the on the Titanic. All of the all the first class suites they were all made for Titanic. Unreal. And then throughout the years, we've been known as um, a bolt manufacturer. Okay. Um, mayoral chains of office, various of the sports medals such as the Six Nations, the Premier League, wow. uh, the 2020, the T20. Um, and then obviously special commissions for heads of state around the world. So it's not all automotive, but what no. we did, we, we took this kind of, so this kind of jewelry ethos, so this jewel manufacturing ethos, and we, and we kind of put that onto a car as well. So now what we like to say is, it's no longer a badge, it is a jewel for a car, which obviously adds to, you know, yeah, it does yeah, make absolutely. it more special. And because some of them, we make them in precious metal as well. So the idea of today then is to take you along for the journey, setting context of why Vortons are so significant in this story, but also I think it's it's gonna be fascinating. I've never seen one of these being made. Prior to shooting this, we spent some time in Nick's office and he was showing us badges. Like once you hold one and you see the amount of work in it, even the uh, weight of them. Yeah. This for me, I haven't even stepped through that door yet. You'll be seeing it with me firsthand. So it'll be a really interesting journey. And the whole point of each uh, episode of this series is to set context to just how much work goes into each stage. All right, wow, check it out. This is the very beginning of the process of stamping anything, basically. Uh, the metal itself is all stored here. Uh, we're currently stocking about four or five tons there. It doesn't really? look a lot. It doesn't look like that's that about much, four or five tons. That's about wow. four or five tons, yeah. Okay. So we have we have different different gauges, different thicknesses of metal for yeah. different jobs. Right. So you've got your your thin, what we call the thin bendy metal, which will be for small badges or, or tie pins, anything like that. Right. Through to your thicker material, which is here, which will be for the Aston Martin wings badges, for example. That is hefty, eh? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. That is, that yeah. is hefty. Wow. Yeah. Mate, I can already tell this is going to be such a satisfying oh, process. Yeah. <laughs> it's great yeah. when you see it work, so good. All, the, all the presses are stamping. Yeah. So the presses themselves, you know, as you know, we're a very old company. Um, all these presses are around 50 years old. 50 years old? 50 years old, yeah, but they wow. run, they'll run forever. You know, they get serviced weekly, they get wow. stripped down and cleaned okay. every couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, it's all, they're, they're in perfect working order. Uh, what we've got, so there's numbers at the top of each press that represent the, the tonnage. Okay. So four of them are, are 360 tonnes of pressure. 360, 360 tonnes of yeah. pressure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got two of them at 180 tonnes. Right. And around the corner is, yeah. is the big one, that's 600 tonne press. What are you stamping with that? 
the, the huge DPX wings. That was what that would become. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right, and wow. other things as well. So, you know, with the likes of, of precious metal, yeah. so, uh, 18 karat gold and yeah, platinum, yeah. you need that extra that extra pressure because what you'll see when we're, when we're walking around, you know, this first process, it's not a case of one stamp in the press yeah. and, and the details up. Okay. Metal goes work hard when you stamp. Okay. So you imagine you've got this piece of metal here, yeah, and you're stamping with. Let's just take the, th the 360. Let's say we, we want we crank it up to 300 tons. Yes. But when you're when you're compressing metal, you're obviously squeezing it sure. together. It will only stamp. It only moves so far. Then it goes what's called work hard. Right. That's when we get it under the torch and we we'll fire it until it's say until it's red hot, and then we cool it. And that changes the, that changes the makeup of the metal itself. Okay. It softens the material. Yes. And then it goes back in. But that process on a, on a wings badge yeah. is repeated about six to eight times. Seriously, so, so it gets stamped six yeah. to eight times. Well, no, effectively. It, so it's, it's actually more than that. It'll have every stamp is called a blow, so it'll have two consecutive blows, right? And then it's annealed, and then that's that's then repeated six to eight times after annealing. So you're looking at more like you know like twelve to twelve to sixteen blows of, this, of that. This is what I'm talking about, right? So yeah. so half of my aim from this is the next time you see a Aston badge, you're yeah. not going to just dismiss it as a badge. Exactly, you know? exactly. I mean, we're five minutes in the door, yeah. and you've told me that it's it's worked up to 13, 14 times. Yeah, now, yeah. We're at stage one. That's stage, that's stage one, that's stage one. How many hours do you think goes into an average, if there is such thing as an average badge? Well, if, if we were making just one badge, if we had just one badge in the factory to make, you're yeah. probably looking at two hours, uh, two days, sorry, about two, two days. Two days? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, oh God, yeah. yeah. Two days for one badge? Yeah, because if you think about it, the stamping process itself is yeah. going to be a few hours. Okay. And then you've got to then you've got to clip it and then we have to put pins in the back, which is for the yeah. one of the final processes. Right. And then there's the enameling. The enameling is hours and hours because that mate. the enameling process has, has got seven, eight, maybe nine sub processes to it as well. So then from there you've then got linishing and then you've got polishing yeah. and then you've got chrome plating. Um, but the the biggest part of it is the way the way we run this factory is no one no one's employed on piecework here okay everyone is employed by Vortons right which means everyone is responsible for their own work so they have to monitor their own quality so rather than having an inspection at the end of the process yes it's inspected at every process right so you have okay. got a, you should technically have a flawless um, quality inspection process because ev and they don't pass it on to the next stage to the next pair of hands yes until they've signed it all off so if they've got an issue with it, they hold it back and quarantine it, which is obviously why we, we have, you know, the, the standards are so high here. Yeah. Uh, given us the last year, we supplied, say, 35,000 badges yes. to Aston Martin with 0% reject rate. Zero? Zero. Over 35,000 35, But that also equates to just under 90,000 components because some of the badges are, mul are multi-parts. So that actually, you know, yeah. so 90,000 separate components yes. and it was zero percent. We don't make a habit of, of passing anything that we find isn't, isn't not Aston Martin quality, but it's not Borson's quality. Sure, yeah, yeah. Because if it's not good enough here, yes. then it's not going to be good enough for the car. So we want to make sure it's right here before it goes out. So cool. Yeah. You know, when you start telling these stories, you know, really, this is what it's all about, to have a, a, a greater sense of appreciation for it. Because yeah. it's, it's easy to, you know, see one of these cars drive by or parked up in a car park and go, okay, nice car. But I think after this journey, I want people to look at individual components and go, that was Nick, yeah, you, yeah. you know, oh, that was Nick yeah, and that yeah. was his a stage. This will be um, a 150 badge, 150 mil, which we'll put on, say, DB11 and DBX. Right. But if you look at that, that's had, you can see there's a slight shadow of the text there. Yeah. And you can see the veins are starting to show through. That's had just one blow at, at just shy of 500 tons. So that's one press. That's one press. So one double press. Okay. And that's what I say about it going work hard. So, so each size? Yeah, front, yeah. It's a front, so it's a man and a female tool. So I'll, I'll, show, you, I'll show you a tool, an example. But you have to, because of, because of the, the thickness of the badge, yeah. there's no way that will come up with, say, just, with, say, just the, the bottom die, the female right. die. Yeah, yeah. So you need, you need the male force to push in to yes. the female to help. It's got to push in the back to help yeah, create yeah. This, this detail. But that's what I mean by saying this will be a nail, say, six or eight I, times. I see. Because that's now rock hard. That is way too hard to just put straight back in. I just assumed it was one stamp with, you know, like with the embossing yeah, of the yeah, logo. Yeah, you just sort of went, there it is. You yeah. know. So a lot of people so think that. It's, yeah. Both sides have got their own shape. They have to. They have to. Wow. To create, to create okay. the lift that you need. So this, this depth here, you're, it will never come up otherwise. And that's being pressed up 500 yeah. tons. That's, five, that's 500 tons. One thing I didn't mention as well, when you're stamping, yeah. You're not just compressing, you're spreading metal. 
Okay. Can you see how the, how yes. the metals, you see yeah, how you've got yeah. the stretch here? So this is what we call the flash or the waste material. Okay. So what we do, after we've annealed it, we then clip it down. So we get rid of this because we're reducing the surface area. Okay. So when the surface area is reduced, yes. the pressure obviously is increased sure. back onto that part of the badge again, and which will help to raise more detail because when we, when we use our enamel, when we inlay with the, with the glass enamel, yeah. you need sharp edges. It has to go to a sharp edge for when we See, fire that. Because okay. that's all done with a torch as well, yeah, or in, yeah. in an oven. If it's, not, if it's not meeting a sharp edge, and we've just got a rounded, rounded detail, yeah. when we then do another process called linishing, right. um, it will, the enamel will just chip out. So Crazy. then you get, you get big chips in the enamel. This it's, is what I'm talking about, man. It's so not just a badge. It's great. <laughs> I love it, man. It's, it's brilliant. Fantastic. So that's, that's that. <laughs> so we'll do. We'll do. We'll, we'll now go and stamp, and then we'll get you get you um, annealing. All right. Mega. So step. Step up to the plate. Cool. <laughs> the badge as well for the DBX is slightly larger, isn't it? Yes, it's the, the, it's the biggest the, badge now. It's 180 yeah. mil. Wow. Which yes. is actually the same size that used to be on the Signet, which is the smallest car. You're kidding actually. me. Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, you now. It's, it's a big moment, you. man. It is. It so, is. am I just am I about to make my own badge here? You're about to make your own badge, and if you okay. break it, you owe me a load of money. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're doing it in the 360. So it's 360 tons of pressure. Okay. It's going to be fairly straightforward. Everything's set up for you. Yeah. Simply place the blank into the die. Okay. Okay. Uh, like so. Make sure we cover. All the detail, all right. Okay. And it is, it is nerve-wracking. It is, it is a bit unnerving yeah. the first time you do it because, okay. yes, it's a lot of a, a lot of pressure, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> so, but yeah. as long as we make okay. sure that we are completely covering the badge, yes. so just go across there. We know we're good. And then what we'll do, we'll push and we'll hold the button, okay, and it will come down and we'll give it two consecutive blows. Okay, go for it. Well, this is this is a quite a uh, moment. I'm not sure if this will end up on a car, but I'm going to stick this on my car. Yeah, well, yeah, why not? <laughs> it's going to be great. Okay, so I think I th that looks fairly central, right? Look. Press and hold. And let go. There you go. Give it one more because you kind of, you see how it half dropped oh, yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go, one more. And then let go. I think it's on inch. There you go. You that. So there is some skill to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, what we've deduced from this is I can't press a button very well. Nice first time. <laughs> How satisfying is that? Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. So now what we've done, what we've got now is we've got the the badge has gone work hard. Okay. Okay. Which means it's not going to move any more than that. So this is right, where we need, to, we need to anneal it to soften it. So this is where we soften the metal. And this requires Extreme heat. a torch. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets really fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to load them up. And what we'll do, it's fairly straightforward. Stop when it turns red. <laughs> red, red means stop. Okay. Well, I didn't expect clear? to be doing this <laughs> this afternoon, but here we go. Oh, that feels good, man. And clean. So that's now that's now ready for the next blow in the press. So, so this will go through a press again. Oh, that will go through. That will go through that four or five more times. So so when you say a, a blow, yeah. that's a whole round of that. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I thought you meant it would you would stamp it like thirty no. times. <laughs> no. So it's had its two it's had its two consecutive blows. So bang bang. Onto the onto the torch. Clean up. In the, right. in the acid and bright dips, dried off. That's now ready for round two. So you do all that again? We do all that again another five times, six times. Fire, acid, everything? Yeah. And then we have to do what's called clipping it to shape. Okay. So we get rid of the, the waste metal, the excess yeah. metal around yeah. it. Because we only want 
this week. Yes. We only want that. We don't want any of this waste. Okay. So that's got to go. Right. Okay, so we're just with this same badge. And this is, as you say, stage one, despite the fact that there's like multiple stages to stage yeah, yeah, one, this yeah. is just the pressing stage. It's just the pressing, this is just stage one. Yeah. Crikey. I'm never going to look at a badge the same way again, man. Seriously, I think no, it's, it's fantastic. True, it's true. It's true. Right, James. First part of the metal finishing, the plating side of things, will be the hot soap cleaner. Okay. Uh, we'll put the, we'll submerge the badges into this for probably 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how dirty they are. Right. The dirt will be from the polishing compound that we've used to, okay. to polish the edges and the fronts of the badges before coming here. So they'll sit into here for 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then we take them over to our ultrasonic cleaner, which is behind you. Ultrasonic, ultrasonic. cleaner. Ultrasonic. So okay. what we do with this, is we'll turn it on yeah and it creates um high frequency waves through the water through the again this is a hot soap cleaner again right but with the frequency that passes through it okay so then what that effectively does is it shakes any for any excess dirt that hasn't come off in here which will shake the rest of off it off in here <sighs> okay okay <laughs> yeah so again it's all you know it's all all the, there's so many stages to yeah. this thing so yeah. many stages and it's and this okay. is written this is a really important part as yeah. well uh, if there's any dirt left on the badges, yeah. and then we, we plate the parts with a slight speck of dirt, yeah. that will create a, a bubble or a lift. Probably yeah. the most important part is the, is the okay. preparation. Yeah. Any slight dirt that's left on the badge, if it goes into the nickel tank or the chrome tank, that slight bit of dirt will create a lift or a bubble in the badge, okay. which will, in time, peel off, All right. which leaves you with a reject part. Yeah. So we have to make sure that our badges are, again, pristine before they even have a, a coating of, of plating on them. Wow. So very important, electro, uh, the ultrasonic. Okay. Which then brings us to the electro cleaner. Okay. Again, this is a third cleaner. Yeah. And what this does, we use, um, we have a, a, a mild current uh, going through it as well. So yeah. you've, got your, you've got your cathode, the anode will be the, the metal frame. Yes. Where the work is wired onto. Okay. In here, there's a mixture of cyanide and soap. <laughs> right. And then when you, again, when you submerge the badge into here, yeah the badges will start fizzing. What that does, fizzing helps if, you, any, if there's still dirt on here, yep. then the, the dirt will be definitely be taken off in this, in this tank. Your badges aren't having nickel plate or chrome plate, they're yes. a completely different finish, but yeah. more often than not, they'll go from here into the nickel tank, right. which is where we then put, say, the protective nickel layer on before yeah. the chrome. Yeah. Nice. And then from there... So many stages. Yeah, there's loads, loads and loads and loads. Okay. Uh, Yours being a, the, the finish that they are, we're going to do a very, uh, trying to get a, a dark antique brass mm -hmm. sort uh -huh. of finish, as we discussed. So there's a, a range of two different vats here. There's very, various chemicals in here. A, a lot of it is a, what we call a chem bronze. Right. Um, and when we dip it, so as, we, as we're dipping, the material, the metal itself is changing colour. It's getting darker and darker. So when the badges first started out, they're a nice pink, coppery colour. Uh -huh. And as the more we dip them and longer we leave them in for, yeah. they'll start going darker, right. you know, like a dark grey, slowly turn to black. Okay. And then once we've, once we've got that finish, that's yeah. then we'll go to the next stage of the process, which is the finishing. Because right. then what we need to do then is take some of that black off again uh -huh. and kind of expose the, the copper underneath or the, or the brass underneath. Wow. Right, James, this is now, this is the penultimate phase before All the right. lacquering. So this is where we'll kind of hand over to you. You, uh, you can let John know how light or dark you want the badge to go. So it'll start, it'll, it'll relieve part of it. Okay. If it's, if it's not enough, it'll take more off. So this, this is now over to you to, to decide. So once we've decided on this finish, this is what will make the production car final badge finish? Yes, yeah, definitely. No pressure again then? Not at no. all, no, no. <laughs> all right, John. All right, so the idea is that we're trying to leave this, this darker black background and then the veins of the, the wings, the outer edge in the Aston Martin logo, John's gonna polish it back so that it will reveal the, the, the sort of bronzy color under it. And so it's at this stage we are gonna finalize how much of that bronze shows up against that black backing. Yeah. It, it's amazing how subtle it is, right? Yeah. Okay. Pressure. Yeah. Too much pressure. It takes a lot off. It's really starting to pop now. It's really great seeing it happen. What's amazing about all of these stages, which we're finally seeing in reality, is we've been working off renders and Photoshop files and just bouncing emails backwards and forwards with the Q team to dream up this spec. And now we're here, physically seeing it 
being created. Oh, dude, dude, Look at that. The same. Yeah, fantastic. Here's our before and after. So we've kept this, this black backing and all of the veins have just been brought out in this sort of bronzy brass shade. And the idea of this is that it is in keeping with the theme of the car. So we have a, a black Alcantara, black leather with a contrast bronze stitch. So all of those subtle accents on the inside will be uh, tied in together nicely with subtle accents on the outside. Uh, these are just some of the dyes that we store here um, for customers. Some of them are our, our own dyes as well. We've got about 20,000 at the moment. 20,000? Yeah, around 20,000. Everything from uh, down here, we've got, say, the old Volante dyes and the old DB6 dyes. So right. they're, you know, 50, 60 years old. Uh, we've got jobs here for Q8, Amman, so various royal families. Um, Constabularies, HMRC, we've got sports medals, so the Premier, League, the Premier League dies somewhere, there's the Football League dies somewhere else. Really? I mean, the biggest one really is the Football League, because we've, we've got those dies going all the way back 130 years, you which is it. how long we've supplied the Football Same League thing. for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you could walk along and see some, I could see the five there for DB5 straight away. <laughs> yeah. So you could walk along and pick some up and go, oh, Amazing. God, you, know, you, you did that. And, and then here we've got a lot of our clipping and piercing tools as we discussed downstairs yeah. once you've created the stamping and you want to get rid of that flash material yeah you use these uh, use different different uh, range of, of clipping and piercing tools to get rid of that that okay. scrap material that you don't want so, so yeah. presumably there are items here which have sat on the shelf for over 100 years oh yeah yeah we've got um just down at the front here we've got an old rolls royce die that has right. got to have been 1910 1920 so end, end this of the is road. your quality control final inspection room, is it? It is, yeah. Okay. yeah. So aside from having the inspection all the way through mm -hmm. stages, yeah. processes, through the different pairs of hands, we now come to this is the final frontier <laughs> but, yeah. of, okay. of inspection. Yeah. All we've got left to do that is to that. take the pins off the back, which were for the chrome plating, right. and then put the tape on. Right. But as far as it goes, it's, it's mirror chrome, it's just polished, mirror polished automotive chrome plated and that should pretty much be good to go. It's quite strange because you're so familiar with how the Aston Martin logo looks but I don't think I've ever got so close to one. The intricacy of it, it's amazing yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah and the things we can thing. do with it as well, you yeah. know, your badge is they haven't had enamel but uh -huh. we've managed to get a completely different finish, yeah. uh, a completely different texture from it as well because we've done the sandblasting and the highlighting and then we've done the, the dipping yeah. um, and then we've used a different sort of uh, different sort of mop on the lathe to create a different texture on the on the outer yeah. detail. So from 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 one from an identical badge you've yes. just created something, something completely, completely different, different and totally unique. I'm still gobsmacked that I'm I'm here creating what will ultimately be a, a small piece of Aston Martin history. Yeah. Really it's Absolutely, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so. you know you'll be the first and only one that's, with that, that's wild. With that finish. <laughs> that is your, really crazy, mate. Ever. Really, really so. crazy. Yeah, it's great. Well, Nick, thank you so much, mate. It's been, honestly, it's truly been eye-opening. I'm the first to put my hands up and say when I, when I was on my way here, in fact, I, I spoke to Sam, the guy behind the lens yeah. filming this now. I was like, you know, it probably won't be too long. How long can it possibly take to make this batch? You know, how wrong was I? because the amount of labor and skill and processes involved in, in something which is seemingly so simple has actually blown my mind. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, I'm exhausted. So. Well done, mate, it's brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. So, the next time you'll see this, I shall be applying it to the front and rear of our very own DBX. Massive thank you to Nick and Vortens for showing us around. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will just see you next time. Ciao.